Hello, welcome. It is that time again. And it's very rapidly happening uh, at this point in time, too. It seems that uh, it was uh, not that long ago I was doing this thing once every couple of months, and now it's like I just did this, like, not even two weeks ago, and here we are again. Although that one was, I guess, a little late as you know, post-tournament things go, but that was not uh, really my fault. My ignorance is my fault, I suppose, but like I'm gonna I'm gonna excuse myself of blame there. But anyhow, we are here. I'm joined by the one and only Papa Popper, aka Ryan, who just took down his second sanctuary. And I don't know how many that is for you overall in your own personal record, but uh congratulations. Welcome back. Uh he's been on the Thank show you. here, but uh, you know, we haven't had like a uh, sit down like this, because uh, I believe the time that you won last, I did a thing where I talked to, like, David, who was in the final, and then... I, don't know, so I, I did something else. Um, but it was prior to me, like, kind of organizing this thing and having this discussion with Clay and doing all the riffing and all of that. And creating the circuit, as we like to call it. Of course. Even though, I don't know if anybody else but me calls it that. But, you know, hey, here we are. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's, so, uh, you, you know, it's like... Uh, Clay, Common Theory, and uh, Possibility Storm, or seem to be the places where folks tend to get interviewed. Uh, we used to do a little bit of it on my server, but I've taken a bit of a hiatus. was uh, out for about four months there, um, not making content and stuff. So certainly didn't envision that when I came back and played in my first Magic game in a while, but also like first time in a tournament in a little while that I was going to put up any results there. But um, I brought something hey. powerful and I had a good time. It was awesome. It was a lot of fun. It did the thing. It's good to be so. back. It's good to be yeah. back. Yeah. So, um, to wrap up this introduction, um, basically, uh, after a, a hiatus, you came back out of nowhere, won a tournament, like like you yep. never left. Uh, kind of, kind of wild that that's even possible. Uh, people like me are over here like grasping at straws at ways to actually win <laughs> games, and you're over here like, just eh, here's the tournament win. I'll hook you guys. All right, cool man. Here's your pat on the back. But um, also. Congratulations again, but yeah. Uh, Thank you. If, Thank if, you. If you're new here, if you got here by weird YouTube algorithmic things, or perhaps just a link that's on his server and you clicked on it, you never seen my stuff before. This is the Champion Deck series. This is where I interview and or converse with tournament winning pilots that have won recent competitive popper commander uh, events. So. Yeah. The majority of what I've done has been online stuff only. It's been mostly been Common Cause and Sanctuary, but I did uh, Clay's R.I.W. We just recently yep. interviewed Heartless uh, that took down uh, the Popper Pit in Philly. Uh, and, you know, now we're back to Sanctuary. And, uh, you know, there's going to be more of these tournaments, and we're going to end up having other people that we talk to. And uh, in some cases, this has been weird, because it's like I've never talked to Heartless before that, and then we ended up being like kindred spirits, which was super dope. But then... Then I get to talk to somebody like you. I've interacted with a hundred times, and it doesn't. It's like okay, it's just like we're having a phone call, you know, and it's no big deal. Oh yeah. And, but also makes it cool because then when you have the rapport, and then the the thing happens, and magic, whatever. Uh, people like it, and that's why we keep doing it. Been trying Where to do more and more, happens. more and more popper stuff as I can. So the format's great. I love it, and I want to support it. So yeah. With no all kidding. that said, we've got some questions for you that uh, I tend to do less of the interpersonal stuff and more of the talk about the deck thing but there are some questions here that are obviously are going to be your your own you know bits of personality thrown in there and yada yada yeah, yeah. Uh, and then after that uh maybe some hot takes and uh we're going to take a little bit of it not a huge huge in intricate deep dive into the deck but we've got some things that you can uh learn by watching this and i will put some cards up on screen as we discuss them and things so that you know you can get the full effect and hopefully if you want to you know learn the deck play the deck and uh you know that sort of thing you're inspired hopefully you know ryan will be here will be able to tell you how to do that so to round things out or to get things started rather mm -hmm. because this is your first time on my channel in a conversational fashion and not a gameplay fashion i require folks to as tradition dictates talk about themselves to <laughs> gush about their lu luxurious uh, history with cardboard uh, that costs uh, way too much fucking money well, so how'd you get started uh, yeah, well, for those of you who haven't met me before, my name is Papa Popper. I am the host of the Common Connoisseurs YouTube channel, uh, where it's dedicated to CPDH uh, and exploring its entirety. 
Uh, we do tend to have not a complete, but a uh, focus on on um, on the less well-developed archetypes of mid-range control and aggro with the occasional dabbling in some unusual combos, things like Honest Rutstein and, and whatnot. So the channel's been around for about two years. I started playing Magic in when I was seven in Invasion and uh, was gifted a, a collection of draft chaff from the, from the, from the olden times from my <laughs> uncle who uh, used to draft all that stuff the and he gave days. me his collection of cards. Uh, yep, yep, exactly. Uh, from the before times. I'm from um, there. I'm from then. Yeah. That's me. Yeah. I was the uncle. <laughs> and that that collection um, didn't have any like power or anything in it, but yeah. it was what got me hooked. I got it for Christmas. And then um, and then shortly after that, for my birthday, uh, we had an exchange student from France named Ludovic who bought me a box of Invasion. And, uh, you know, back then, opening up 36 packs of a game that I hadn't had a lot of experience with was like, I mean, it, it was about the coolest thing I could possibly imagine as a kid. And it got me hooked really quickly. I love the art. I love the lore. I read some of the books and uh, ultimately had some friends who were much better than I and, and played a lot. And it, it, it really grabbed my attention. I returned to magic after a, a break in between i ended around mirrodin or something had a long break in between came back to it when i was in college and i was had some income i uh, actually well, <laughs> no income no oh, uh, but I this mean, is part of the story though i mean I, I i wasn't i didn't have very much money at the time and i was trying to play competitive magic because whenever i play a game i do gravitate towards more of the competitive side i, I think it's Same. just i've got a competitive edge i like doing that kind of stuff I mean, and, it stems back to like playing nintendo with your oh, siblings totally. it's you know? always been competitive for me right yeah mm -hmm. and so Same. I started playing, I was playing standard, um, I was playing Teamer Energy, my deck got banned basically, and all of my cards lost all their value. And what I was trying to do is use standard to leapfrog into, into modern and in other formats. And so I was kind of like the process that I was following to try and build a good modern deck that I could play for a long time kind of failed. Right. And so at that point in time, I realized I'm not actually going to be able to afford this game. Like, I don't have like a good source of income. Um, I'm working part time, two jobs while I'm going to college. I've got to pay for bills. And so right. I think at one point I discovered the professor and uh, through the professor, I discovered Popper uh, 1v1. Mm. And uh, I went really deep into that. It was like pretty shortly after that I discovered You're talking Popper. 60 that, card. Yeah, 60 card okay. 1v1 Popper. Right. And our... My neighbor, just because just uh, uh, isn't there like oh, yeah. a, a, a dual commander version of Popper? Exactly. Sort of? right. uh, yeah. Well, there, there's a lot of people will refer to Popper commander as Popper when they first learn about it, but it's they're really different, right? These are they're right. not the same ban list. They're multiplayer yeah. versus one v one, and then right. there's dual as well. So I usually refer to Popper CPDH PDH, or I'll usually say Popper commander if it's just casual. Right. And then of course we have dual PDC. Um, so yeah, for Popper one v one in sixty card. And my neighbor was a tournament grinder. He came over with several large boxes of cards and he was like, hey, I don't need this stuff. I'm cleaning out. Do you want it? Took it, was basically able to build six popper decks from that. And from nice. there, I started to run events at my LGS. I was able to build a battle box that started with five or six decks and I would loan them out for free so that people could play. And I was persistent enough over the course of several years that it became the dominant format in the, at the, uh, in the area that I played in. Um, had a Discord server of like 200 people, uh, ran the largest Magic the Gathering events in Bellingham, Washington, where I live, for about eight years. And uh, that's kind of where the channel started. So CPDH is basically the only form of Magic I play now. I'll occasionally play uh, Popper, but I watch a lot of Legacy, Vintage, and I don't really watch Modern very much, but... Yeah, so in the format of CPDH, I primarily focus on mid-range and control. Those are my most kind of the, the area that I, I like to play. It's the thing that brings me joy. That, that kind of leads us style. to the deck that we're... Yeah, that is my play style. Yeah, it's always... I, I prefer interactive magic and combos never really had much allure to me, but um, that definitely leads us to the deck that I chose for the tournament, which was Hollow Marauder. And uh, Hollow Marauder is six and a black for a spectral rogue, 4-2 flying. Its cost is reduced by one colorless for every creature in my graveyard. And it has an effect on it that is really akin to Siphon Mind, which is that you can target in this case, which is relevant. You target any number of opponents. They discard a card. If the card was four mana value or less, so when they discard cards that are three, two, or one, or zero mana, you, we draw a card. And so it's really similar to Siphon Mind in that way, except that it's on an ETB. 
I would also point out, uh, as we kind of discussed a little bit of some of the things about the deck in the, the pre-recording, it, this is very reminiscent of, like, Dargo, because it's a high-costed commander that has, you know, it, the body's different, but, like, it has flying, which is pretty cool. Yeah. But then it's just, from a it, if you can, yeah, if you can meet the requirement of putting a shit ton of creatures in your grave, this is now a one-mana commander that's a 4-2 with flying, which, you know, if you can pump it even a little, makes a short clock. That's uh, right. I mean, it's a, it's a, any commander that discounts his own cost is worth looking into because yes. it means that if you meet that requirement, you are not only potentially skipping the command tax, but you are getting potentially a very undercosted threat. Like if Hollow right. Marauder results in a draw four, or sorry, draw three, discard three, and it's a 4-2 flying, and you paid four for it. So say, like, commonly, we cast it. It's not uncommon to cast it on turn four or three for three or four mana. I mean, battle screech, four, is, battle screech is four mana, and then you get yep. the two things, and you have another body, you tap it, you, you get two. Exactly. You get four bodies, it's four power. It, it's At essentially the mana, same sort of thing. It's a great deal. Right. <laughs> if, you, right. if you, like, you know, turn, uh, turn one, you know. If you turn uh, it into you know, one card, it's worth it, I think. That's right. If you turn this into, if it is a four mana siphon mind with a four two flying, it's a great card. Um, and that's kind of the pr the principle here is like, how do we discard this card? How do how do we get cards in our graveyard, creatures in our graveyard that discard it? And that leads us to some really unusual deck building patterns that really require that I break the mold on how I commonly build decks so to build for synergy. This leads into basically my first official question, and it's kind of two parts. It's how does it win? <laughs> And what are the spicy includes? Like the cards you would highlight to say, like, these are yeah. pieces to the puzzle to make it win. Let's start with the second one there. Uh, what is unique about this deck and also about the way that I built it compared to the other versions that I've seen online is that, number one, I am self-milling. And there's really only one other deck in the format that wants to do that very aggressively, and that's uh, Sir Conrad. This deck goes very deep into self-mill, and it's a critical part of actually turning the commander on in a timely manner. Um, self-mill can come in a lot of different forms, though. It can come in the form of discarding my own cards. It can come in the form of cycling, uh, land cycling. It can come in the form of just general mill or even activated abilities like Fairy Macabre, which put a creature in the graveyard for free. Or Dredge, that's the other way. Um, you have Stinkweed Imp. So yeah. all that functions to essentially turn on the commander as quickly as possible. And it's not because if we don't have the commander, we can't win the game. But the commander is going to facilitate a source of card advantage that is pretty unmatched. You know, there are commanders like Sivris, which you're very familiar with and have pioneered, yeah. where you have the ability to draw three cards every turn, and then there are cards like Mobilize, Vitalize, or um, even um, the, what's um, the creature? The, uh, uh, the Elves, Quarian the elf. Ranger. Yeah, Quarian Ranger. Yeah, that allow and, you to untap uh, Sivris and draw more. Right, um, yeah. But but the thing is, is that Hollow Marauder doesn't re re really require those like one of Extra those setups. small number of cards. Right. Yeah, you basically, you know, it's quite possible that you could draw nine cards off of Hollow Marauder. And the difference, of course, too, is that with Sivris, if you draw a very good card off of the Sivris activation, people will you deny will it life. to you. Mm -hmm. So you're not actually going to draw the card. Part of the power of Sivris is that you always hit your land drops and all the things that aren't devastating, mm -hmm. you do get to draw. So there's actually kind of a deck building incentive in uh, a deck like Sivris. Less to bombs. Actually yeah, less bombs, right? Mm -hmm. Because everything comes back, or and or you play a recursion that gets them back, so that they recursion take the damage and you get it back. Recursion and redundancy. You have your exactly. Nadir's Nightblade, you have your Mirkwood Bats, yeah. and you have the Falcon Wrath Noble, and but two of those like are two noble. You're never going to deny somebody a Dusk Legion Zealot. Exactly. You're never going to deny them a land, right. and so Sivris gets a lot of that in this mm -hmm. deck. When we draw nine cards, they are all our cards. Um, yeah, nobody's going to get to do... It's yeah, it's gas. gas. Now, people can deny us the card drop by discarding yeah. cards that are expensive. However, most decks have a large propensity towards cheaper cards because cheaper yes. cards tend to be better. So it's an accelerating Marauder, format. Generically speaking, it's very hard to have a deck that has a lot of very expensive stuff because your action economy is very low. You have to have a very good reason to do it. So your ponders, your preordains, your brainstorms, even something like, you know, maybe there's cards like Treasure Cruise, you know, where you don't draw the card. But a lot of times those cards are going to be cast. Um, and if I'm emptying somebody's hand, you know, then it, it, it's it's worth it if we don't draw the card, if we take a, a treasure cruise out of them, for example. But um, so that's really the, the first thing. Uh, the first main point is self-mill. 
The second thing that I would say is actually a product of the incentive that the commander offers, which is a very creature dense deck. Yep. With a very creature dense deck, we get access to some extraordinarily premium cards that are very good in black. And they, they can help us act as a form of enabler for the win condition, which is to overwhelm our opponents with value. And those cards are primarily uh, Culling the Weak, which is the one black, sack a creature, make four black. People on your channel are going to be familiar. Mm -hmm. uh, Songs of the Damned is the other one. One mana, instant speed, make a black for each creature in your graveyard. And this card is absolutely broken in this deck. Well, it, we, it, it's we, so uh, much more than a dark ritual. We talked about like average creature counts in grave by like an average turn, and you said usually it's like turn three or four. You have enough to make your commander cost like three or four oh, at most. Oh yeah, I would say regular turn three and turn four is a very is a is a you will cast the Marauder. The amount of discount you have is going to be dependent on your mill, but mm -hmm. I have 41 creatures in the deck, which means that, you know, that's that's 40% uh, of the cards that I mill are going to be creatures. So, you know, sometimes you high roll, sometimes you don't. But one of the things that I've realized with self mill, and I really don't like self mill in most cases, but one of the things that I realized about it is that when you self mill, the funny thing about it is that when you don't get what you want, it's really no different than if you drawn the cards and they were bad. Right. And that happens, right? Like sometimes you cast like a distant melody in it's kind of in like third a path second hand, class. you know? Yeah, and you draw like seven lands, right? And you're like, okay, well, I guess I lose. Um, right. and, and so <laughs> the self mill, whether it's good or bad in terms of the hits, whether you hit a lot of creatures or you don't, is really no different than if you drawn those cards and they were bad or good. So the self I think I learned a lot of those lessons yeah. playing CDH too, because. Yeah. There are decks that like you're playing like Stitcher Supplier and things that just like yeah. mill you and mill you and you don't care because you're feeling an underworld breach or you're feeling exactly. something else. We don't have that equivalent, but you doing what you're doing in this deck is still essentially feeding your engine. It does it does break the mold, yeah. And and really the funny thing about the self mill is that in this particular deck, because we have four swamp cyclers that can all find witch's cottage and we have mortuary mire and we have uh, dig up the body and we have bone bind orator and eerie soul tender we have a lot of ways to get cards from the have graveyard you, have you not considered so like i see you know so overwhelming remorse i want to say they're in that ballpark there's two maybe three cards that are like five mana in black that just say put it on the battlefield and you have some you have some beefy beaters yep. in your ha why, some why why have you not considered something like that where you're just like okay I'm gonna yeah because I have these rituals I can snuff out or I'm sorry uh, calling the weak this whatever make creature four, I have and make four and this is an easy time. cast yeah and exactly why 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 yeah. not why not yeah well there's one card in particular that's worth mentioning there um, I am playing dread return for example and sure. dread return is and an important part premium. of that that's a premium yeah, but premium, like i think yeah. those other but cards also could summon be undead good. Uh, summon undead is the one that that is on the short list it's 5 mana you mill 3 and then you return a creature from your graveyard to the battlefield one of the power that's one of them, things yeah. about that card is that also you're milling uh, yourself somebody yeah, if somebody blows, yeah, exactly. If some it, first it mills itself, which is highly synergistic, but the mill is structured in a very important way. You mill first, you then resolve the effect after, and what that does is that if somebody blows up your graveyard, you are going to get to mill three and then recur a creature from among those milled three as well. So you can't really stop a person from getting a card back necessarily. Right. And, Unless they mill three lands. Right, exactly. And so so I think part of that is that what you can do is you, you know, the person has great, you, you, you cast the summon undead, they have graveyard hate, they crack their Nihil spell bomb, you wait for that to resolve, and then you cycle a spectral snatcher or something along those lines, like a, one of the cycling creatures, and then you mill three, and now you've got four cards to select from, and you can just recur one of them. They can't really stop the targeting of it unless it's going to be... Um, you can't stop it, basically, once it happens. Right. That card is good, and it could totally be playable in this deck. I don't choose to play it because the slots are tight on non-creature spells. That's one of the limitations of yeah. having a very high creature deck, a zooish deck, is that you are. it's hard to find room for that. The I understand. It, it was, it was kind of you, like a, a one for one for maybe something that you already have. Um, yeah. That maybe and it doesn't you, discount like, the creature much. 
the, that's a big the, part of it like it's five mana uh you know five mana is a one mana discount on a creature that's your, a big your, part of it your, your top end isn't as high as i was actually i mean i have thinking. expensive stuff five six seven mana the reason you would play a card like summon undead is that all the self mill is card selection right when i turn one mill a lot with troll a giant or a gary or some other big creature i don't look at it and say oh damn it, like, I wish I'd drawn that card. I look at it and say, I'll get you later. And so right. the self mill ends up being a form of card selection. So you have card advantage in the command zone, which is very high. And then you have card selection through the cards that you mill that you can recur, basically. The other thing that makes this unique, uh, so along with the rituals is, is part of it. But then the other part of it is that when you have a very high creature count deck with a lot of fodder, stuff that you kind of don't care about, you, you get extraordinarily unique powerful and high action economy removal. Um, and so the cards I want to mention here are Bone Shards, which is discard a card or sack a creature for one mana, destroy a creature. You get Eaten Alive, which is one mana, sacrifice a creature or pay four to exile a creature. And Final Vengeance, which is one mana, sacrifice a creature or an enchantment to exile a creature. These cards are fabulous for the deck because they're putting creatures into the graveyard. They're only one mana. Okay, so like we can fit these into the curve really, really well. And they're also fairly unconditional. They destroy or exile that creature. And exile based removal is pretty relevant. Um, yeah, I, there are decks I, like when you, Summoner, for example. When you pointed out um, the, the final vengeance, I was like, oh. Yep. I didn't, because yeah. that's from the new set. And I like, I, gla I gla guess I glazed over it. Probably, yeah. as you said, because like people kind of overlook things that aren't instant speed. But we're going to talk about that more. We uh, um, we do think that that might be this this card. I think in general is a good case for running a sorcery speed removal because yep, you're already wanting to sack creatures and you can second enchantment, but you're not going to. There's another one even too. Your enchantments are too good, player. so you're never doing that. But either way, yep. it's still doing the thing and then, you know, giving you that exile effect, which is, yeah, uh, that's crazy. Yeah. I, I can understand, like, Bone Shards has been around for eight, ages and, and like yep. effects have been around for ages where it's pay this, it's cheap because you have to sack a creature on top of it, and then you destroy a thing and it's usually got a clause like non-black or non-artifact yep. or non-something. And in this case, it's just... Target creature, no restriction. It dies. And it's exile. So, yeah, like, if it is a combo piece, huge. you can exile, like, untappers for Gretchen, and, and they're just gone. Creatures. Or that. Yeah. Anything. Um, it, and also for combo That's crazy. creatures, I, I'm, I'm going to consider this in, in Sivris, honestly. Yeah, it's Sivris would be a great place for it, right? Yeah. Like, there's, um, you know, one of the places that these also pair well in black is with recursive creatures that I don't play in this deck, like like ret uh, retrofitted transmogrant, haunt of the dead marshes, persistent specimen, clay yeah. revenant. Any of those um, recursive ones are great. All those are really good with it, yeah. Especially Shitter because that it. means you can go turn one, play a creature, and turn then you can two, also do like the the final flourishes and stuff of the world where you're sacking yep. the creature to do like the kicker cost, Candy which grapple, is final flourish. Right. Yeah. And you're hitting for anything in the format basically is dying. To minus that. six, minus six is heavy. It kills almost everything in the format um, as a combat trick. Even if it's too big, you know, you can line up blockers with the, with the minus six, minus six, and it's good. I play these creatures because they fill the graveyard. They kill things unconditionally and they uh, allow me to reuse my hollow marauder. So there's a lot of different reasons. They're basically like if my if my graveyard is full, a bone shards is going to allow me to attack with my commander, bone shards the commander to kill something, and then for one more mana, I'm going to get to cast it and siphon mine the table again. Right. So essentially all of these can be uh, looked at as two mana, siphon mine that kills a creature and discards everybody's cards, right? So one of the unique things about this is that eight out of the 11 removal spells, the targeted removal spells in the deck that I have, are one or zero mana. This deck is a strong case for these sorcery speed removal spells. Sorcery speed removal gets a really bad rap. And the reason being is that people have a bit of a mind virus about instant speed removal. It needs to be instant speed. Where instant well, speed part of that is because is, a lot of combos, combo decks, win on the stack, and uh, if you in can't, CPDH, if you can't, no. <laughs> but like, but that that is the case yeah. though. Like even in like yeah. Gretchen, you're you're not gonna your sorcery speed removal doesn't help you right. stop Gretchen or it lore, does, lay though, lore on your turn. 
It and does on your thing. turn if you preemptively yep. do things. Yes. But that's part of the thing. So think about it. This format is unique in that most of our format has a sorcery speed combo element. Or sorry, it, 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 there's a haste problem, as we would call it. Yes. So a Gretchen deck, it does have ways to win on, you know, win on its turn with no, with very little setup. There, there's ways to do it. Uh, but a lot of decks are sourced are, because of they, the, they play the enchantment out stuff and it has to live. You can play the yep. enchantment at sorcery speed, and as long as it doesn't get removed or the creature well, doesn't the get removed. Well, the untappers have to be unsummoning sick, is what I'm saying. That's the that haste too. problem. Right. So you just kill the thing on your turn. Now, I, I want to make a case for why this is reasonable. If the combo player is uh, position three and I'm position one, when I use my sorcery removal, instant speed or sorcery speed on my turn. I want that thing to kill that thing. I don't want to trade my removal for a counter spell. I want to trade my card for their creature combo card. If I do it on sorcery speed, it gives time for player two and potentially player three to find the answer to that thing so that we don't die. I don't actually like saving my removal for the stack because these decks make so much mana like a Gretchen deck, for example, that they're going to be able to deploy with their mana many different counter spells and interaction pieces on the stack to protect it. I would rather kill the thing outright and attrition them every single turn. So a card like Bone Shards, Eaten Alive, Final Vengeance, they allow me to maintain a very high tempo and a very high action economy where I can interact and develop at the same time. I really like sorcery speed removal in that context. Like maybe I'll put it this way. I'm not offended by it. I'm not looking at it and saying, oh, that's sorcery speed. I can't play that. Um, I have no issue with it. Now the deck does play Final Flourish, Overwhelming Remorse, Vendetta, Kumbaj Witches can be activated at instant speed, Defile and Snuff Out. So it's really only Bone Shards, Eaten Alive, Final Vengeance, Kumbaj witches and priests of the ancient lore that are um, that are sorcery speed activations. Now, that's really one of the three unique things about Marauder is that we self mill um, in a way that is really really uncommon. Maybe like you know Sir Conrad decks do that. They don't always do it because there's a lot of builds of Sir Conrad you can do. You can mm. mill yourself to damage people. You can edict the board and sweep the board to kill people. Uh, yeah, so those are the kind of different approaches. And then you get rituals which are really really unique. I have seven ways to produce a lot of mana right on. On the spot which allow me to have a very high action economy and the rituals are okay because i have a very strong source of card advantage in the command zone that offsets the fact that once you use the card you know it's like it's a one-time use but the fact that i draw a lot of cards means that if my rituals lead me to drawing even more cards then they're worth it and then the last thing is that i get very very high action economy very high tempo interaction uh with the deck so that's really what makes hollow marauder the way i've built it special so um that leads me yeah. into uh, the next question. So I, I, I can't recall exactly where I said it because I've been recording a lot of conversational content recently, uh, myself uh, being a guest places and then also hosting these types of things. So I am kind of at a point where I don't recall where I said what thing I said, but I know I said this. I, I, I went on record saying that you know you, you won right after having interviewed Heartless, who won with a... Uh, Abdel Black deck that was yes. surprisingly focused on discard stuff that like yeah. nobody saw coming and it won him an event. And then I just kind of made the correlation based off of your commander that you're doing stuff to either Grave Flicker it or this or that or whatever. The, the, and then probably playing some some measure of discard creatures and whatnot. Causation, whatever, correlation, whichever version Didn't of the track word in this case is the yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, I made correlations basically saying that two game or two tournaments in a row that we were all collectively like reporting on or talking about, that a mass discard uh, deck took we had down. two different discard decks took down tournaments twice in a row. And maybe this is the thing that we've not been exploring and we need to look yeah. at. Uh, and great, then great it turns out you say your deck isn't, actually discard focused yeah the two the two discard cards that we play in this effect are, are in this in this deck outside of the command zone and to your point what my response was was it's not a mass discard deck and that's not actually right. true the commander discards cards and there is a mode of the deck where if you have like sold adnate calling the week you have these rituals or you have a lot of creatures in the graveyard and a lot of sacrifice effects right that i can say i'm not i'm not cycling this this marauder in and out of play to draw cards because i like my hand i'm doing it to discard everyone else's cards and that is a mode if you have these turns where you make ludicrous amounts of black mana and you have sacrifice outlets in play 
or in hand that you can just say, I'm going to draw up to 15 cards. I don't need 15 cards. I'm going to have to discard a lot of them. And the point of it was to empty everybody's hand. But in the actual 99, I only play two. And they're actually there for reasons that are not entirely mass discard oriented. So Delirium Skines is the first one. And I want to shout this one out because this card is pretty bad in a lot of contexts. It costs you a card to discard three cards. So we're actually down four cards and then everyone collectively is down three. And you could look at that and say, okay, you got nine cards for four and that's a good trade. I mean, um, that's like the, times, the definition of mass discard on a it card. It is the most but... discard card you can play. <laughs> right, right. But, but the other it's one not is, the focus, right? No, it's not the focus. The, the reason we play Delirium Skines is because yes, it does discard. It's a lot of cards discard and three cards is pretty heavy. But the other thing is that if I discard two or three creature cards, it's a ritual. So we can look at Delirium Skines actually as, as like a ritual or a self mill. On turn four, if you draw Delirium Skines and say you've like, you know, you've milled or cycled or like say you've done four creatures, right? And then you Delirium Skines, uh, another two, or you had three creatures in Graveyard and you Delirium Skines, another three. On turn four, you can go Delirium Skines, Hollow Marauder, everybody discards four cards. I spent three to do that, but I get three back. That is a game ending sequence. And there is a game in the tournament in Sanctuary that was the demonstrator of that. And I'd done a lot of playtesting with this. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't know if I, the, the shitty host that I am, I don't even know if I mentioned that you, this was Sanctuary 7 that you took down. No, you, uh, you did, you did, yeah. Did yeah. I? No. <laughs> like, oh my God. No. <laughs> so, so, sanct so during Sanctuary 7, game two, uh, everybody mulliganed quite a bit. Uh, there was a Dalek Squadron player who mulled to three, uh, I which played was pretty unusual. Two. Yeah, and and uh, you know it was it was rough beats. I don't know if their first three hands were something that were reasonable that maybe they got greedy and didn't keep them, but it didn't sound like it. It sounds like you just got some bad mulligans, had to go down to three, and then the other players went down to like five and six maybe. And I turned three Delirium Skines, and there was only one other card at the table, and I functionally <laughs> kind of won the game on the spot. Right. Yeah. The, so the power of this in this deck is very, very high. It's the volume it's, of it. It's the very, it puts though, creatures in the too, graveyard. Because in a sense, it, like, that yeah. kind of game is only going to happen once in a lifetime. Maybe, you know, two, three times here and there. But I a lot of times I, you're going to have yeah. that where you get it late game or mid game even where people only have, like, one card in hand. Like, yes, effectively you're putting them out of cards at hand, which is good for you. But, like you're not getting that same impact when they're discarding yeah, three. Right. They're just in it. Exactly. Like, one guy has nothing in hand and these two guys discard one and two and you're like, I discard Generally three. speaking, but it's still have, fueling like, your stuff. So that's still yeah. beneficial. Generally speaking, people have one to two cards in hand. So you're going to get right. rid of all of them. They may right. spend some of those cards like the removal but spells to kill That is stuff, the point so about wasted. where the correlation came through is that yeah. your deck can effectively put people with no resources in hand and yes. then you just beat, beat them to, to death. Right. And that's and the I'm same just... correlation that I made to the Abdel Black deck because that's the exact same description the Heartless gave me when he yeah. said, I just attritioned everybody out. They had no blockers. They had no hand. No creatures. I win. <laughs> and yeah. your decks right. can effectively do the same thing even if that isn't your game plan. You can still do yeah. that. And that's where I said, yep. like, these are discard decks that won tournaments. And then and I said, Abdul ooh, is a unique I need one. to revisit Zoyoa, and Heartless agreed. And then we both, uh, I updated my list, and then he brewed a whole new list. And I compared yep. it, and it was like 40 cards different. And I was like, holy shit, weird. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> I thought we were on the. On it. I thought we were on the same page, bro. Like we're gonna do. This, a, we're gonna do a video to compare. But anyhow, this continue. particular deck is different from other Hollow Marauder decks in that I don't play mass discard creatures that you would commonly see. So, like a common building of this deck, if people were looking into it and saying, "Oh, what would work?" is they would think, "Oh, let's discard more cards." So we're talking like virus beetle, elder fang. You, you, you lose fang, out disciple. on triggers on your commander if you're forcing discards. No, if people cannot discard, you still oh, draw cards. Oh, okay, okay. That's I needed yeah. to double check it because I was like, "Oh, that's bad." My first build of Hollow Marauder many, many months ago, like five months ago, was a mass discard deck, and I play tested it, and I was really, really disappointed with the results. I did not yeah. find that my Hollow Marauder was ever really reasonably priced for me to want to cast it. Um, it felt like I had to do a lot of expensive stuff to turn on my commander. 
And the mass discard from turn two onward made me enemy number one because the problem with mass discard when you really lean into it is that it fucks people up here. Yeah. Mentally, people Throws really do not like off. being mass discard. Yeah, because you've got all these cards that you want to use. Because you're thinking you're denied turns it. ahead. It's like chess. You're yes. like, okay, I right. see the board and I need to do X, Y, Z to get to my place and I have these resources to do that. And you now you've just you've drops. just taken away one, or you in the case of the other, you've damage. taken away three, and I'm now stuck with this one card. What yeah. do I do? And yeah, the I get best, that. The best place for this discard is really in in sort of like Marsh Crocodile is a really good place for it. And there's a theme here: Marsh Crocodile and Abdel uh, Abdel White uh, Black, sorry, um, with uh, Agent of the Iron Throne. And the yeah. reason being is that both of these decks can really abuse the ETBs and empty everybody's hands. And then they have kind of right. a combo finish. Or in Abdel, it could be a combo finish, or it could be that you're just flickering drain. Um, and so in Abdel, the other thing that makes it really good is that you get mass edicts that allow you to basically, uh, similar to this deck, the edict creatures actually become additive, where you you know, play your Chain Devil, or you're actually be more likely with like Slum Reaper. You play Slum Reaper, you sack a 1-1, you get a 4-2, everybody loses a creature. I'm actually adding to the board instead of putting my Edict creature in the board, uh, in the graveyard, which right. is commonly how it works. And so with that deck, you can deny people all their creatures and deny people all their cards, and then winning becomes totally arbitrary. Like you don't, you, it, it becomes so easy yeah, to win Yeah, nobody has point. resources, they can't interact with you. Yep. Exactly, and, and, and they're um, they're doing draw go. They're either doing draw go because they can't cast the thing, or they yeah. need to wait for you to do something because it's instant speed, or it's a land they play it. They're now empty yep. hand, or it's a creature they play it, and now they're empty handed. And, and yeah, that's Abdel it. Abdel often enters the pod as enemy numero uno. So when you're playing a deck that enters a pod as an enemy number one. You want to play stuff that symmetrically demolishes everybody. You want to play all the edicts, all the yeah. discard, and all that stuff, and you want to reuse them because you're mm -hmm. enemy number one. You're going into a 3v1 from the beginning, probably. If you're Abdel Black, you're probably the second scariest thing at the table in terms of timeline, but you might find yourself as enemy number one if there's no other combo decks at the table um, because you yeah. are just doing something very oppressive and broken. In this deck, again, we have Delirium Skines. The other one is Okiba Gang Shinobi. And the only reason we're playing Shinobi in this deck is because it is both ninjutsu, which allows us to reuse the commander, and it's going to take those last cards out of a person's hand. Okiba Gang Shinobi paired with Edicts is really good because it means that they're not going to have a lot of creatures, and Sh Shinobi is probably going to get in and discard the rest of their cards or trade with a creature. Now, we could look at Shinobi and say, perhaps... Instead of Shinobi, where we're looking for the discard and the reusing of the commander, maybe instead we just focus on reusing the commander, which can be done in a couple of different ways. You can either just sack the commander with a lot of creatures in the graveyard and then replay it and just pay one or more to cast it, depending on how many creatures you have. Or there's a couple of ways that you can kind of cheat the system. And that is one through Grave Flickers. And this is really the other, the other place where this deck is really constructed differently than everyone else's, is that everyone else has got uh, Mass Discard and they have Grave Flickers. The problem with Grave Flickers is that they are non-creature spells and they also kind of require something else to be happening, like a sack effect. They're also highly telegraphed. If a person has one card in hand and it is removal, and I go to Grave Flicker, my Hollow Marauder, that person is 100% going to cast their removal spell on my Hollow Marauder, and they're going to two-for-one me. Right. Because that card is going to go away anyways. A, a face-up, Hollow Marauder getting Grave Flickered, everybody knows what that means. I'm going to reuse it, I'm going to sacrifice it, and then I'm going to get that trigger again. Mm -hmm. So in that reason, I don't like those effects. I, well, I think so that they're, I, I tend they're to use worth them, considering. Okay. But I have used those, so I, I run a lot of, like, a critical mass of those in Sivirus. Specifically for this but, deck, I want to mention. Other decks, it's a different story, but sure. like Sivirus, well, you have well, a sack outlet in the command zone. Well, so My point being was that you know. was was less about the commander and more about I don't use them in a way that's, uh, I guess, offensive. Proactive. Right. Yeah. I'm not usually like casting it and then casting a, a deadly dispute on the thing so that it comes yeah. back. It's more yeah. likely being used reactively when somebody's block, trying to target. Grave flicker. Right. That's right. that's probably one of the most and, consistent ways to do it is you block with a Gary or you become a, unattackable. 
it, it's a, a pilot choice, and that's kind of yeah. how I play those, and that's why I like them because it's almost like my instant speed yeah. counter spell kind of. It's my yeah. gotcha moment kind of thing, yep. and you do that. But I have used it offensively too, where I have actually cast it and yep. did the you do my it. own thing. Everybody's and tapped then, out. You right. just do it, right? And you do and, it and because it's mode. also a thing that might be the thing that like drained out the one guy for the last point of damage, right? Well, so. it could absolutely win you the game to like gray flicker a Gary, um, right. whether I, it's I, just I, through the overwhelming. I, I would have done in you know. that same sanctuary tournament that you just won mm-hmm. in the first game. I went to time only because. We took a insane amount of time figuring out how to kill someone on the stack, and then that uh, time took me to time because I had 12 minutes to try to win the game. But yep. I garried for eight, sacked it, recurred it for eight, and, and then swung for winning. 12. But the guy had, yeah. he trespassed or cursed me. Yeah. Turn two. Yeah. That's I hard. fed the fuck out of him. He was at like 50 yeah. life. I hit he him probably, for, for 16 20 with. I, oh, he was at 50 life. I. Hit, domed him for fucking 16 Gary, hit him for 12 combat, and then got passed around. I killed the other guy through the Gary. Uh, then yep. he he did whatever he had to do, and then I went, okay, this, that, the other thing. Got him down to like 15, but I couldn't kill him. Passed, and then time. And time. If, he would, yep. if he passed to me, I was drawing uh, the, yeah. the emergency weld. I was going to yep, sack it back Gary, up and do it again. bring it, yep. and he, he was dead. Combat damage, end. And I needed yep. 30 seconds. I was yep. so That's mad. Brutal. <laughs> it's, one of the tr- it's one of the challenges with uh, Sivir Screen um, is that it, it just isn't a particularly fast deck, which in a tournament environment usually, can be really challenging. Usually it does better work. In that particular game, I just f- kind of drain helped him drain everybody while... Uh, he kind of profited because I was feeding yep. him with all of my triggers. So yeah. that without sense. that, without that, that you would it would, yeah, exactly. It would have been easy yeah, claps, course. but, yeah. but that is the 90, that's the 90 minute limitation that we've got. And that actually plays yep. a lot into how I ended up building this deck. My first iterations of it were all mass discard focused, gray flickering, things like that. And the second iteration, I had to make a completely new version of the deck because the, it was clouding my vision to look at all these cards and be like, oh, they're all so good. Like, how could I not play Gray Flickers? How could I not do this? Like, of course I've got to play those cards, but I really needed to rebuild the deck from scratch. So I built a test turbo mill version, which is the one that I ended up landing on. Um, And that, that was kind of a big breaking of the mold. There's a lot of ways in this, in in which this deck is extraordinarily non-traditional when it comes to the format, but it's also way, way out of my comfort zone for deck building. Um, to the point about Okiba uh, Gang Shinobi, I did want to mention there are two other ninjas that are ninjutsu for two that might actually be better than Okiba Gang Shinobi simply by proxy of the fact that they are just a cheaper ninjutsu. So the two ways you can reuse, uh, three ways you can do Marauder is that you just sacrifice it and you recast it with no discount. The second one is that you grave flicker it and then sacrifice it. Um, so that you're essentially getting a very cheap recast, one mana recast, or you have to sack it. So whatever sack effect plus the recast or you ninjutsu. And the fact that Hollow Marauder is flying and it's not a creature that you ever really want to kill makes ninjutsu very, very good because it's also a creature. So when you mill those cards, you're going to get creatures in the graveyard. They're going to fill it up and make Marauder even cheaper. So Okiba Gang Shinobi, the more I talk about it even right here, is probably going to go for Azra Smokeshaper and Mokotai Ambusher, both creatures that can reuse an ETB like my Hollow Marauder um, and very, do so very cheaply. The other funny thing about them is that if I don't need more cards, I can attack with a Chain Devil or I can attack with an Accursed Marauder or a Demon's Disciple, and I can ninjutsu those two. Um, you can ninjutsu yep. Gary. You can ninjutsu all sorts of stuff in this deck that are really, really good. So, yeah, the unique things here go beyond the self-mill, the rituals, and the and the high action economy, very efficient removal, but it's also in the way that I'm choosing to reuse the commander, um, which is which is unique. You kind of uh, already answered some of the questions I had for you. You've already kind of expressed not necessarily weaknesses, but like cards that you may have uh, wanted to think about, yeah. including post tournament. And we can and, talk about weaknesses. I mean, well, I can I can cover that pretty quickly here. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah. So so the weaknesses of the deck are really just one, and that is graveyard hate. Graveyard hate is hard yeah. on the deck. Yeah. Um, it's going to turn off pro- certain You can't cards protect against that against that either. There, not, we don't have like an endurance. Black. We don't have an endurance effect in this format where we can just slam it and, and put it all Even your cards then, back in the grave. 
That's even still then, not good I for wouldn't. You. <laughs> no, it's not good right. for me, right? So in mono black, we have no way to stop uh, graveyard hate from obliterating us. But here's the thing, and I'm not just saying this because I'm a hollow marauder player now, because this is probably going to be a, a deck that I continue to bring back to tournaments pretty pretty regularly. Graveyard hate is narrow and often very bad. Graveyard hate does affect most decks in the format. Most decks in the format, there are cards in their deck where it matters to get rid of their graveyard. If it's against a black deck, it could affect Gurmag Angler, it could affect Death Rattle, it could affect creatures that they want to recur with Witch's Cottage or Mortuary Mire, it could get rid of Edicts, um, it could get rid of Flashback cards, it could clear for blue, it could clear a, um, a Treasure Cruise. You know, for green, it could rec uh, get rid of cards that you might want to um, reclaim or cards that you might be looking to get back later on with different graveyard recursion effects. Um, against red, it can affect things like Magmatic Sinkhole. It can affect Unholy Heat. For black, it also affects Ghastly Demise. It affects uh, you know cards that check the number of cards in your graveyard. It affects anything that's um, threshold-based. So Threshold or um, Delirium, it does all those things. However, its main reason, the reason we play Graveyard Hate, has always been for Flicker. It has always been for Flicker Combo. For Flicker combo, it's going to be the Archaeomancers. It's going to be the Snaps. It's going to be right. it's going to be the ghostly flickers primarily uh, that we want to get out of the graveyard. And the trouble is, is that you're not always playing against those decks. Graveyard hate like Relic of Progenitus also hits your graveyard, which is the number one cause of me not putting it in my in my deck in, in almost any deck is because right. my graveyard is something I'm often trying to utilize. And if I pop a relic and then draw into a treasure cruise, it's just like really, really fucking bad. So graveyard hate is a very narrow and effective tool against a very small part of what we really care about. And so, yes, you could say play Nihil Spellbomb, play graveyard hate your deck. You know, Nihil Spellbomb often goes in plunder decks anyways, just because it draws a card when you sacrifice it, if you pay one. Right. But Graveyard hate is increasingly leaving my decks because I would much rather have removal. If a person has I a, uh, if I have a Nihil spell bomb in play versus having a victim of night or a defile against an Abdel, something I would that's rather huge price that's it like, out of the game. Well, something that's huge that's like uh, on that like sort of underworld breach level to make the the the, yep. the correlation. Something like that would have to be printed. To where it's like that's that makes this graveyard yep. thing like such a powerful strategy that we all right. have to pack in graveyard hate. And until well, that Abdel deck is exists, World Gorger Dragon. So it is that deck. Like sure. Abdel is the deck that wants to abuse the graveyard right. in uh, in that way. But Abdel's However, kind of fallen off outside of Abdel Black. It's only and, one uh, deck. Yeah. It's only one deck. And here's right. the thing. When I was playing CPDH back in like, uh, you, know, you know, several years ago, when everything was blue dominated, you know, it was a lot of flicker decks. It was just a lot of blue. So cutting off treasure cruise, deep analysis, um, right. you know, flicker. All combos, that makes things sense. Like that. Right. That's all. It, it's that was it's all a good. medical, really. Yeah, it is. And if you're and back then, it made sense to have graveyard hate in your deck because you were always going to have a deck that really, really cared about its graveyard. When I Nowadays, came into the format, you... I packed it in every deck because I thought it was something that was necessary. Yeah. And then and, as and... I played more and the meta has shaped the way it has, it's like, eh? I don't really and what need that this leads me to is that although hate... I will argue that I did have a shred memory moment in the tournament. Sure. And it's not and, to say that graveyard hate is It's only in good. the deck to transmute. I don't. I, I don't even care yeah. about that effect. But it ended up actually stopping a win attempt. So it of was course. like that's ball. Graveyard I hate will win. It's like a broken clock that will always be right twice a day. Right. You will have times where it works. So the thing is that Hollow Marauder is weak to graveyard hate, but increasingly graveyard hate with the diversity of different ways that people win. It does not stop Malcolm. It does not stop Gretchen. Mm -hmm. Why are you playing it in your main deck? Because the thing is that we're talking about a niche effect. You don't want to play that much of it because it's very, very selective. And then when you play not that much of it, you're actually not that likely to hit it in the times that it freaking matters. Yeah. So the less graveyard hate you play, the worse it gets. And I, I, the I'd say there's, hate, there's kind of an argument for like, you know, uh, so like the shred memory, <laughs> if you have the transmute target. And in Cypress, the transmute target is Wild That's World a Herald story, though. that does the You're thing not, yeah. and that does the thing. But I'm also running, uh, at least I have run at certain times throughout the build of the deck, run Fairy Macabre. 
Which is also just like, you could just play it as a body that's a flyer that can do some The damage. modality of the car, of the great Exa- advantage, of the am, card hate is important. That's me. I miss the modality. I do not well, like and, playing and cards is, that don't have modality unless it's just, you know, a, a good card by itself. And this know? is where the graveyard hate is fine to play if it's incidental. If you're playing Shred Memory because there is a two mana card that you absolutely want access to, then play Shred Memory. Yeah. It's not to say it's bad. It's to say that the great, the dedicated graveyard hate cards, and I would say Fairy Macabre it's, even fits I, in that category. Like Tormods, Tormods is bad. a great example. Like Tormods is free, it blows up yep. graveyard, but like it's and a slot in your deck. It's a slot, and then Relic too. Um, Relic also, is also uh, like Bajukabog. Like that's a land, but it comes intact. Like uh, there's a lot of different yeah. things. Bajukabog meets the criteria because it's not actually eating a slot. It's not um, a cost, a really. It's it's kind it's of really, like it's not that much yeah. of a cost, no. Right. And, and the funny thing is that even Bajukabog isn't that great in a lot of cases because no. it's not instant speed. But Bajukabog is good for attrition-based decks where you can just take them out, especially if you're a black deck that gains life and you have a well against you. A Bajukabog is great, right? So like oh, you're, yeah. you you're turned four or five in, and like you've got a good mass of graveyard. You've played your commander, but then you sacked it. And then yep. you couldn't recast it, and then we moved on, and then I have a Duke of Bogu, and now your commander's yep. exorbitantly it, priced. It is undeniably blah, blah, blah. effective against right. this deck. But the thing is, is that graveyard hate is so situational against the rest of the format that I it just is. really am not that concerned about yeah. seeing a lot of it because I think increasingly it's going to go away. I think cards, cards like, that you like, can play, like, we, like you already mentioned, like Nile Spellbomb, where you can you can bomb it yep. and draw a card, it replaces itself. It's fine. And it's an it early does. game investment where you're like, turn one, Swamp, Spellbomb. It sits yeah. there for like five turns and then you pop it, you draw a card. Great. It's good. Yep. You know? So. It is, and I think that that's those are the it's cards. It's the same I argument for like Aether Spellbomb. Like, that's why Tread people memory, play it. because it's a tutor. Nihil Spellbomb because it's plunder fodder. But you know, your Relic of Progenitus does not really synergize with anything. I have that for Conrad. Really, I've taken that out of every deck. I, yeah. I when I first came into the format a couple years back. I played it in every list. I don't play it. Anymore. It's not going to be something I'm super worried about in this deck um, because I just don't think it's going to be it's it's going to continue to not be that popular. And this is just going to be a fair deck that really isn't worth targeting with right. the graveyard hate. Right. Um, but that's yeah. the main weakness of the deck. The advantages right. that you get with this deck is it is truly nihilism dot deck. We care about nothing. Nothing, Lebowski. We care about nothing. We come and cut off your Johnston. It is it is like nothing in the deck matters so much to me that I'm devastated when I lose it because all the creatures are expendable. If I have a Gurmag Angler, I'll go to combat with it, attack, and I will sack that shit to Soldevi Adnate if I don't have access to Hollow Marauder to make seven mana because if I really care about the Gurmag Angler, I can get it back later on. Right. Like It's all expendable. And right. that level of... That's, you know, that's, I'm a huge that's fan the C- of commanders like that. That's the CDH mindset, too, is it's like all or nothing. Like, we sacrifice it all. Sacrifice everything! It, kills it, them it all! all dies. Yeah. It is all meant to die. Kills, kills it wants to be in the graveyard. Yeah. Um, it's like, so, oh. so this deck dodges sweepers. Like, if somebody fucking... If somebody sweeps my board... Like, it okay. fills my graveyard. Right. I, I'm like, cool. I'll cast Hall and Marauder again, and I'll refill, and I'll get those cards back eventually, or I'll draw into more that are, that are good. Right. Like maybe right. I draw into Gurmag Angler into Writhing Necromass, right? Um, or maybe I draw into Lot with Giant on the next one. So uh, we don't care about sweepers. Removal is very bad against the deck. Counter spells do stop it, but again, how many of those do you have, and are you using them? You're also Hall not like you're not a combo deck, so you're not really no. like getting stopped. You're just like, okay, then I just wait till next turn. The most common as long as somebody... nobody else combos up. That right. that would be the other weakness I would say is probably because you are in that kind of situation where if you don't just win off of your attrition yep. fast enough, like somebody could just combo out from yeah. underneath you. Well, and and look but. at this too, counter spells. Okay, so counter spell does stop the ETB, but notice something very special about Hollow Marauder. I'm going to read the text off here. When it enters, any number of target opponents each discard a card. If somebody at the table has a counter spell and they're thinking they want to hollow counter the hollow marauder, I cast it and on the stack they say I'm going to counter spell. I say, hold up, wait a second. Oh, what if I don't target hey. you and I target the other two players? Because remember, 
they're gonna the opponents are gonna lose cards too. Yeah. So they can save their counter spell. They won't lose a card. I won't draw a card for them, and I'll hit the other two players. You do not need to target everybody with Hollow Marauder every single time. And this is a very, very important piece that I've been talking about just in the last week with the with the two people that I've been working with on this deck, which is Erosium and Dagon Righteous. Um, and there's a lot of ways you can game that, right? Like, there's a lot of ways you can say, like, okay, um, you know, I'm going to uh, do this. I'm not going to discard your cards because I want you to have answers. I want you to have things to do. And I've got tons of cards anyways. Um right. So the ability to choose who you punish with this and who you don't is an important part of it. There's a lot right. of ways to navigate it. Um, and especially if, if, if he's discounted heavily and somebody counters it and he's just going to be one to cast again, they're not going to spend the counter spell, right? Like right. if I have five mana and he's heavily discounted and I cast him for one and they counter it, I'm going to cast him again for probably right. one, maybe two, and then they're right. going to lose another card. Right. It's like... It, it's so punishing to interact with on every level of the stack yeah. that it's I really, think people, really best people just have to, to. kind of like focus on like just trying you, to kill you. Stuck you. It up. Yeah, if I'm the problem at the table, you just try and kill me, um, and that you know that that's definitely part of it. Um, in those cases, though, even then, Hollow Marauder can just sit back and block, and you block it. He kills something. Right. He comes back. He takes more cards from you. So, right. um, so it is a very punishing deck. It meets a lot of the criteria of something where it's like it doesn't feel good to interact with the commander on any level, except for Oubliette. Oubliette, vanishing, um, something like that. But even right. then, it's like I have a million different ways to sacrifice my commander. So I'm not really worried about getting Oublietted. A because it's sorcery speed, and I have ways to sack him. The other reason is because most people don't play Oubliette. Oubliette is a very highly controversial card in that some people are like it's too I, I slow do. i do but then like i don't so yeah yeah and you. yeah like that turns off a very important part of my deck and that would be maybe the other weakness is like if you can it's my pants powerful because it, it does it does yeah it shuts down a deck like this it shuts yep. down a deck like dargo etc cetera, etc cetera. but yeah and here's um, another thing it is, is it, is, you... it is, and i even brought that up in my discussion with clay and derek uh for the you know the my whole little uh uh, yeah. PDHRC interview and and they they addressed it as like people have called for bans for it more than yeah, once. Yeah, it's not worth banning. And they're 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 not going to ban it, but like I, they, no, they, they, under, they, they, under, they understand why people want it banned, but they also yeah. understand why you don't ban it. Yeah, so one of one of the other things I wanted to mention here too is that I play quite a bit of control decks and one of the challenges you can run into control decks is how do you win the game? How do you end? You have to have cards like Gary, Initiative, Monarch, um, right. you know, maybe you have like, like TPI has a lot of reach and it's removal. You have like Drain collateral effects, damage, anything yeah, that you it could can be recur. a lot of things, right? It could be attrition based or it could be all at once. You have to have mm -hmm. closers to close the game out. Once you've established a firm place of control, another way that people right. do it is cycling creatures where instead of drawing a top deck land later on, you get like a seismic monster or, or you get, you know, like a lot with, uh, um, a troll of Kaz of doom, or you get a generous end or something like that. Right? right. The way that I've done that in this deck is that, yes, we have all those cycling creatures. I have four big land cyclers that are really good at closing the game, but the way that I facilitate it is with the rituals and right. This deck gets very privileged access to a bubbling muck, culling the weak, dark ritual, songs of the damned, cabal ritual, soul deviadnate, and scourge familiar are all ways to increase my action economy in a way that doesn't detriment isn't detrimental to um, the the number of cards I have in hand because they all facilitate me drawing more cards. Right, right. Uh, you know, songs of the damned for like twelve, thirteen, even songs of the damned for five, six, seven, eight. Those are all totally reasonable. I cast Songs of the Damned like, as a dark four, ritual regular. Like even four yeah, or three, it's, it's a one it's mana, four. like, go it's up nuts. two mana. Like, that's fine. Yeah, it's dark ritual rate is attack. totally fine. Yeah. Yeah, and these are the cards that allow you to go, like, uh, you know, turn one Shriekhorn, uh, you know, mill two, and then untap, mill two, you know, cycle a, a Street Wraith, cycle Lurching Rot Beast, Songs of the Damned for five, and cast Hollow Marauder on turn two with a Mass Edict. These things give you such explosive potential, and we don't always yeah. have them, but we have seven. You know, we have seven ways to make a lot of mana. Um, Redundancy little... is, is key in all of these types oh. of decks. 
For and sure. there's really no deck that I know of that can play all of these cards. I think Sir Conrad right. might be one of them, but it wouldn't play Scourge Familiar. Ball I can see an argument for a lot of these cards in decks like Sivris or other like attrition style Scourge decks. Familiar and Soldevia Adnate. Some of them and could be good. Yeah, yeah. If you, if you were um, to build, I like Sivers I like the Adnate deck, honestly because like Adnate's uh, broken. I I'm on a low yeah. curve, but I do have some of those bigger creatures that. Could well, you have get a low sacked. curve, but you have a lot of cards. So right. like one way to look at it is we're not ramping because we're not producing all this mana because we have big spells necessarily, but because we have a lot of cards to deploy. Right. Like I had a, a really good example is that I. I had a game in Sanctuary where I uh, got grave. Somebody hated on my graveyard. They boot nuked my graveyard, and I, uh, ca I I cast Bubbling Muck, and I got 16 black mana, and I raw dogged the Hollow Marauder for 13, and I was back in the game. Obviously, Songs of the Damned is dead. Cabal Ritual is dead if you don't have a graveyard. But these effects allow us such a burst of action economy. Yeah, like Edict, sack your Edict creature. You know, uh, you know, Witch's Cottage, and then you, you know, like Deadly Dispute, your commander, sack it. You know, Cottage puts the Edict creature on top. You draw it with Hollow Marauder. You recast it. You play a lot with Troll, and then you play a Writhing Necromancer and a Gurmag. It's kind of a, it's kind turn. of a manual storm deck, but it doesn't it's kind necessarily. Of a, it doesn't always yeah. storm off to a win, but it it no. does some stormy things, and I I it like that. Some, I like storm decks. That's that's my it, it's possibility so storm fun. for a reason. Hello. It is very <laughs> very fun to play this deck because you have explosive ways of going off. As I. I mentioned earlier i kind of have that thing with sivers too where you can do the grave like thing with gary and stuff so you can have those storm turns where you just like dome somebody for a lot of damage real and quick. you can do that in this deck too with dig yeah. up the body um you know you can sacrifice it to dread return and then you know pick it up and then you know put it on top of your deck and draw it you can recur it right. with bone bind orator or spectral or you know eerie soul tender there's a lot of really cool combo stuff here uh just a couple of cards i want to mention that are really unique that you won't see in almost any other list that are worth mentioning and they're part of how i plan on closing the game and that is mood mark painter is one of them four mana Two, three. ETB is undergrowth, so it gives menace and plus X plus O or is X is the number of creatures in your graveyard to a creature. And if you hit somebody for a Marauder once, and then you play Moodmark Painter with eight creatures in the graveyard, you 16 somebody on the sex the, se the second hit. Because you that's hit him for bad. 12. Yeah. Which is really, really that's good. Cool the ability synergy. to Yeah, and, and that's important to solve for because the problem that other Hollow Marauder decks have had that's is also that I've watched unique them go that, to time. Like, those types of effects are usually on like red instance of sorcery green you know or green whatever is a or common green, one right like figure spore worm and this is just like um, hi uh i'm a random as black creature that just says yeah play me pump your guy do the thing and there's another two versions of it ghoul feast and soul shriek which do the same thing but they're not on creatures they're also worth considering for the deck the other one is Gary, of course. That's a uh, I, one. I guess we should say notably, a lot of the cards we talked about here, uh, the link uh, to the deck list will be below. But, yeah, yeah it'll uh, be below. It, it, it has a sideboard and a considering list, and a lot of the cards we mentioned here are not actually on the de deck list yeah. as it stood when he played the deck. These are all, like, some of these are considering cards the and things that, like, you've play tested, I assume. There were four, there are four differences between my current list and the tournament list. But they're not structural. They're they're just little like flavor to taste things ones. that make the deck a little bit better. Yeah, like adding adding back in Priest of the Haunted Edge, adding back in Gangrenous Zombies. There, there are a couple of things like that. But so and then Gurmag Angler and Writhing Necromancer are also like ways that we can like win the game. Uh, Crypt Rats sure. looped with uh, pe with a tortured existence, Pestilence with one of the rituals. So right. really solving for how you win the game is very important. And Dread Return Lotleth Giant was an, another big part of that. So if you don't end the game in 90 minutes you don't win and i think right. that part of the trick that solving for winning in this deck is that just discarding everybody's cards and drawing a lot of cards isn't enough to win you have to have things that you draw into that are very high tempo that are going or very high impact that are going to win on the spot so right. that's where the writhing necromass and the gurmag angler come in they're not necessarily early plays all the time same with bone picker right. but they're going to come down in these high tempo turns where i did a bunch of actions and then i go bone picker gurmag angler go right um and that that seems to work really really well so right. um yeah so, so at this point i have two more questions for you so we, we can kind of wrap this yeah up. Uh, so I usually ask this question at the very beginning, but because during the intro, we kind of just rolled into it. 
Uh, I didn't ask the question, so let me ask it now. Hollow Marauder over other quote-unquote established or even experimental decks that you know of that are mono black. Yep. Because, uh, like, we have uh, the only the only other real known quantity that I can think of that I've seen in tournaments is is Lotad's uh, Lair. There's a lot of but known quantity. I mean, there's... I, I'm not saying there isn't zone. other decks. I'm saying that the, no, I can think not. of off the top no. of my head. That's the one... And then yeah. I know you've 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 Dalek. done some some stuff with yeah, yeah Dalek as well. Dalek Squadron uh, you, is uh, you've, uh, becoming also more popular. Kind of pioneered stuff with like Thrall Parasite and other yep. decks, but yeah, uh, I haven't like I don't why think why seen this any one? tournament results, but yeah, like generally speaking, why why this over established and or other competing decks? What what yeah. your your thoughts? Go ahead. We care about nothing, Lebowski. None of the deck is is feels good to interact with. Um, when you attack me, and I have eight, you know, I have eight death touch creatures in the in the in the in the deck. But also, I'm happy to throw my creatures into combat or to block them in combat. And if you fill my graveyard, you're you're aiding my game plan. The amount of asymmetric resource disparity that this generates is ludicrous. It's six yep. cards every, t- and it's actually seven because I'm getting a creature out of it. I'm getting Hollow Marauder. I'm drawing two to three cards, and then I'm discarding three cards from my opponents. That is pretty unmatched. It's also getting privileged access to all of these creature-based synergy cards. Cards like Overwhelming Remorse, the Bone Shards and Company. Um, You're filling your graveyard really well, so you get amazing Ghastly Demise type fodder. You could even play Death Rattle. The creature density and the self-milling leads us to playing Delve creatures as well as flashback effects. In that way, it's just hard to interact with. It has a lot of interaction in it that is very, very effective at dealing with most of the problems in the format. It has a lot of extraordinarily powerful and explosive loops available to it that allow us to make closing the game out pretty nominal. Like if nobody has any cards or they have very low cards and I've just discarded down from 12, uh, winning the game, not going to be super hard. Uh, as I mentioned, you, you, you've you like helped to pioneer some other mono black decks and you've played other ones. You and I have both had conversations about Dalek Squadron. Like I pushed it to a certain level. You did it in certain ways. Yeah. We saw it in this sanctuary. I played against it. You played against it. We saw yeah, what I it could do. Yeah, I put up results with uh, Dalek. We had, we had, a, uh, like, we had to arch enemy it out of one of our games because it was yep. going to win. So we all killed it. And then it was a free for all after they're, that. They're really different. But, like yeah. so so why this one like dalek well, okay well, so dalek like, plays the card draw on the 99 this one plays it in the command zone dalek is more proactive it ends the game more quickly um i, I wasn't it has looking so much piece. for like the one-to-ones because i understand that and i think anybody mm-hmm. who's familiar with the format understands that and that's who's watching these videos right as much right. as i want to be drawing more people in uh they're less likely to be watching stuff about tournament winning people unless they're entrenched so the people who are here yeah. know the one-to-one comparisons. It was more about your own mm-hmm. personal experience with, like, you took a mono black deck to a tournament and you got yep. your ass handed to you and you were just like, this sucks, and then you moved on, and then you got it handed to you again, and then you moved on, or whatever. Whatever the case may be, why is this one so much better than the other ones that you build? Yeah, I Because think I know that you, I have seen a thousand mm-hmm. streams that you've put out not literally, but Mono you know black. what I'm saying. I mean, uh, where yeah, you're, like, where no, just where you're just like, this is like, this is amazing. This is going to be good. This is going to be pushed. This is going to win tournaments. Yep. But then this is the one that you actually like, did something with. So yeah, why? well, in Dalek, I had a Dalek. I had a, a, a top. Uh, I think it was fifth or sixth place with that one. It went really well. I misplayed in one of the games just once that was that I got punished for really badly where I took a draw when somebody was at one life and I missed a blood seeker trigger. So I probably, I would have been in the finals for that game. That, so I think Dalek is right up there with it. Uh, I, I other also think that Dalek is of, right up with it. I think Dalek is really yeah. good because of the smell. Yeah. And just uh, different, very different. Are, are arguably, uh, this is why I think Arabella is good. And this is why I'm trying to, I'm trying to push Arabella, but then I'm also seeing, um, I don't recall which player it was that played it, uh, quartz, I think playing the Samala yep. Rumblers, that has yep. correlations with Arabella and Dalek, and I love the aggro nature symmetrical yes. thing, and I think we we need to push that sort of thing to help yes. with the, the, metal, the meta so here's, like, 
fighting combo. I'm looking at my list of my, the commanders I've worked on, and what I can say confidently, I think, is that there are certain mono black decks or commanders that are uh, not going to be up to snuff in the face of some of the new mono black stuff. Right. Um, the ones that are, Tormod Keskit is one option. Tormod Keskit feels very powerful. You have card advantage and an army in the command zone with very strong zombie synergies. Thrall Parasite is still a very reasonable choice because you're getting a very early pinger. You always have a pinger. And there are a lot of decks like TPI where you want to get a pinger and that's all you want to do, right? You just want to find a pinger and it just has it. Um, also just a really good mono black shell. Sivirus, Agent of the Iron Throne, another one where you're getting uh, you know, card draw and you're getting pressure from the Iron Throne plus the drain creatures, turning every drain creature into 10% of the table's life total is really good. Um, yeah. And then the other one being uh, that I was going to look at, Dalek, and then, but cards like Corpse Augur. Corpse Augur is, uh, it's four mana for a 4-2. When it dies, you can target somebody's graveyard and you lose X life and draw X cards where X is the number of creatures in that graveyard. This one gets knocked off by Hollow Marauder. It's, it's just a worse version of Hollow Marauder. You can draw a lot more cards off of it, but the life loss can kill you. Um, another one would be like Conductor of Cacophony, probably. But Crypt Rats is still a very, very good commander. It's one that almost nobody plays, but it's incredibly oppressive and very, very strong. I would say that the main reason is that it's just very hard to interact with you in Hollow Marauder. It's hard to punish you. The answers that do punish you, like Graveyard Hate, are increasingly bad and narrow. So I think that that's a big part of it. You also just get all these rituals and stuff. It's just a fabulous deck choice in Mono Black. And you don't get the same proactivity that you get from a Loyal Subordinate or a Dalek, but you get this immense explosive power in the mid and late game. It's not like the same game plan, but it is a similar... Uh, attrition style that's delivered in a different way. Uh, yeah, it's, it's like, just done it's like, differently. It's, it's, yep. sustain it's kind of like, uh, I don't know if, uh, how many MMOs you've played, but uh, huh. it's it's, wow. uh, it's it's <laughs> very much um, sustained damage versus burst damage. Yep, that's so, right. So that's the, other de right. The, the other decks are kind of sustained damage and you are kind of the burst damage It's deck. attrition, right? It's attrition, but it, it's attrition in a different way. Of value. Right. Yep. And if you were to compare it to Stivaris, for example, the main differences would be that, yes, they both have the ability to draw three cards in the command zone every turn. The difference is that Stivaris very cares, very much cares about whether Stivaris is in play. You often get another color, or if you're in black, then you're actually... Stivaris is faster, actually, than Hollow Marauder. The, the build that I have with, um, with Iron Throne is faster than Hollow Marauder. Stivaris gives agency to your opponent to decide whether or not you get your cards, but that costs at light, comes at the cost of life, that when you're playing the mono black version is not something that they have a whole lot of because you're drain creatures. I mean, um, I'm on the same. It's it, even in the Golgari queen. version, like they you, it very quickly are not letting themselves. They're, they're giving I, you the cards. I, I very rarely take three off of Sivirus, uh because I, if you become a problem and you have to be like beaten down by the table, then like so be it. That's fine. Like that'll be a collective issue. So I think that that's the main difference. If you were to compare it to Sivirus, is that I discard cards, which is big, and that also it's not a protect the queen strategy. Like Sivirus, you do want to protect it. It's your engine. Yeah, it's kind of everything. Um, and this but one, you can it's afford not, to um, cast it at least three times most games oh, easily you make tons but, of mana you got all yeah. your land drops you, you, um, you so. never never have to worry about it ends up being kind of the same thing where it's not invulnerable but it it yep. can uh be affected but yeah uh similar yeah. sort of axis for sure so let, yeah, let's let's similar. round it out here with the very last question and mm. that is and this is kind of uh you can you can deliver this how you like uh spoilers sure spoiler free or just full out just declare it other decks that you are considering playing competitively in the future like in tournaments like is there is there something on the mm -hmm. horizon do you have a brew that you're willing to share and if you don't want to say nothing mum's the word you can say i yeah i played the fifth totally. and, and leave it so <laughs> Well, you'll probably see me play TPI more in the future. Um, that's that's a given. Hollow Marauder is now going to be entering into probably like my top five choice for, for commanders. Other ones that I think have been really exciting and promising to me are Legate Lanius. Legate Lanius has been has performed really, really you well. You played it on my channel. Um, it, it, uh, it, it does some stuff. 
Yeah. It's it's great. And it's a similar principle, right? Like killing Legate Lanius, you might need to do it because it's big and it's hitting you, but it doesn't feel good because it's going to take another card from you. So right. Legate is actually similar to Hollow Marauder in that way in that you um, in that when you kill Legate, you're just attritioning yourself one more card and one more creature. Um, so that that's another one there. Depending on how the meta shifts, I think that if we if you know, if we see a shift towards more aggro and more mid range, and that's sort what of like I've been pushing, that, like, and some of the other guys have too. So, if people yeah. do that, I'm going to strongly look at Carter or Doom Scourge again. <laughs> Carter Doom Scourge, when it last preyed on the meta, had like over a 70% win rate because it was making all these gut players swing at everybody but them, and they were getting right. a lot of free value off of it. Right. Carter or Doom Scourge um, is how a do you think Alexios commander. plays into that? Alexios is insane. Um, right. I like I, I really want to try to make a build, but then five. I just I just I'm kinda I'm hesitant because like I don't know it, it's so like the uh the rest of the table gets to kind of dictate stuff and I don't like that. I, I don't but know that they do. I, I, I hear what I, you're saying. I, 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 I feel like people... it's it's less deterministic than like Slicer was though. I think in that in this format, Alexios so people have talked a lot about the fact that you can do weird stuff where if your team, if somebody else has Alexios and they swing and then Some someone, and they want to like trample damage they assign or a like trample. whatever. Yeah. yeah th fuck that. Honestly, that like people will do that occasionally, but it is absolutely not how it's going to play out most of the time. They're going right. to, they're going to take their damage right. and they're going to be like, I want that damage to go through. If they're a combo player, then maybe, maybe not, right? Maybe they want right. to keep somebody alive. But for everyone else, they're happy to take that because it's just adding damage and pressure that they want to convert onto other right. people. And they're just going to trample over them. Like, right. they're not going to assign the damage in some weird way. Well, and generally, alive. you're just adding this one thing to the table that you had to pay mana for that now is affecting the whole game. And that's that's why I think it's powerful. Um, well, yeah, Alexios I, I pushes more damage too. than any deck in the format. You can play Alexios on turn. Uh, you know, the most ridiculous uh, you know, examples are turn one. Every the way I have it built is that it's I will three, never three cast mana? Alexios for. Yeah, it's four mana. Four. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I turn two, turn two is for like less than turn three. I don't know, more I, than I don't... turn three. I, I guess you can get turn one with rituals, but that's, yeah, yeah, you can yeah. go lotus petal, ride of flame, you know, <laughs> and stuff like that. And you can cast it on turn one. I think it's a mistake to lean into the really explosive builds because it comes at the cost of a lot of bad top decks that you need right. to mitigate for with like better draw spells. If you just focus on playing a turn three Alexios every game with the small chance to play a turn two, you can convert. Uh, it's eighteen damage because you swing for five for the next player without haste. 5, 6, 11, and then 7, which is 18. 18 commander damage on turn 3 is fucking ludicrous. And the thing is, yeah. is that on those early turns, the answers that actually kill Lexios are very small and few between. Um, if you talk to Dagon Righteous about this, he has a list of all the kill spells that work against Alexios, and it's very small. Galvanic Blast is a very narrow window. If you happen to have a lot of artifacts, it comes down before it goes to the next player or before you know it gets the counter, you Galvanic Blast it. Hard Fire, maybe Improvise Club. Uh, counter spells do stop it. But Alexios is high on my list. It's in my top five because I, I think, think Alexios I think it's is, is potential busted. For sure. The fact that you can't yeah. sacrifice it is fucking crazy because right. every deck that would well, want to do that's that. That's the same thing the Slicer had. Right. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's a big advantage. So I would say, well, because yeah, because otherwise you would just be hiding it over. Like that's the problem yeah. that like the one that was like that before that. My stream team member Joey played it a lot. It, she was Rakdos, uh, five mana. Mm -hmm. You gave her to somebody and then they could swing. She was a five five. Oh, yeah, yeah, the sleeper agent. Yeah, um, um, Zancha. Yeah, yeah, Zancha. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he played that for ages. And it, it was his, it was this meme between us because every time we were in a pod together, he cast it, he gave it to me. Didn't matter what the fuck I was playing, he gave it to me, and I would just beat people, I would kill people oh, for yeah. him, and it was, it was, yes. it was hilarious. And that it's was the great. kind of thing that, that that did, and it created disparity, but it didn't have that like clause, yeah. any of those clauses that these other commanders have Alexios now. is so pushed. If you go, a very easy turn to imagine is you cast a turn one haste enabler, turn two mana rock, turn three Alexios, and you're actually going to push 22 damage onto the table on turn three, and it's commander damage. Right. And all you need to solve for in Alexios, because he has evasion, built-in edict protection, and he's large enough that he doesn't die to grasp of darkness or many other kill spells, all you need to solve for is ramp. You put 20 mana rocks in your deck, 
and it, you're just keep recasting him. Keep recasting him and play right. all the sweepers because the only answer to an Alexios really is something blockers. that locks him down like a pacifism. <laughs> uh, not even blockers, really. Pacifisms, oubliettes, I mean, counter enough spells, blockers, bounce so spells. Big enough blockers, but yeah. But yeah, just keep recasting him and then play sweepers right. to clear up the board so that people can't beat you down. Um, so he's high on my list. There's some other spicy ones that will probably keep in the dark for the time being um, that, that I'm really excited about. But th those are some of the big ones. The, the last one I'll mention is Kutzil Slimes. Kutzil Slimes <laughs> is the most terrifying build of Kutzil I've yet seen. Credit to I Peaches. Have a, I have a Kutzil um, deck, but yeah, no slimes, no slimes. That, but the that, slimes are the, I, the slimes I brewed are the a key. Slime, I brewed a slime deck, uh, but I did Slurk, the ooze itself, so it yeah. kind of counted towards you it. Want, but then you I, want and, uh, then, um, Wood Sage. Oh, <laughs> uh, I did Slurk and uh, Elena, so that you could do um, late game, like, big-ass fireballs. And things. Yeah, there's there's a the, the the best some of the I think the best approaches to slimes are are going to be your wood sage galloping lizrogs and the, that witherbloom that witherbloom build that it's, play played yeah. was it was kind of kind of fun. I've got but, it as well, and it 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 didn't it didn't impress me. Honestly, I like I I got a I got a win with the 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 Slurkalena deck uh, on one stream, and it was kind of just yeah. like a gimmick thing. But uh, yep. I had I had some feedback from people. They were like, uh, "This actually seems kind of spicy, but yeah. it's it's slow. It's slow." I mean, it yeah, it's it's slow, and it's a six mana commander, and it doesn't really like you want. Well, put because you're, you don't really care zone, about really. you you don't really care about the commanders. That's the thing. It's, it, it's a slime yeah. deck first, and the commanders are just extra value. So right. that and there's decks where, that do, and they're also slime. non threatening to where you you cast them, and nobody's actually countering them or giving you but shit. But the problem is, is that slimes are threatening. Like slime yes. decks, the problem they have is dying because you make something too big and you make too many yeah. of them and people are like you have a 14 14 a 12 12 a 9 9 and a 7 7 and it's right. like you could one shot anyone or two and people from the when table. you can do that by like turn four it's fucking wild so that, that yeah. that's where the strength of it was and, and the where commanders, the commanders the were just value but yes the protection, I can see that as being well. It's being the protection, valuable. but it's the card advantage engine. You're right. giving card advantage, and and they all have counters, so they're all modified. They're all creatures that draw cards. Mm -hmm. They can't be killed with uh, instant speed stuff, really, if it's on your turn. And you can put sorcery speed protection on slimes that functionally makes it impossible to kill them. Yeah. So I so Kutzil slimes is high on my list. Hollow Marauder is high on my list. TPI is high on my list. Card or Doom Scourge to a degree. And those are kind of kind of the big ones that I would think about uh, moving yeah. forward. So I, I've got like 400 different 450 um, decks that I've that I've worked on, and I uh, and I would say about um, 70 of those are table ready. So it's a pretty deep bench of cards that I'm concerning. Oh, and one other I wanted to mention is Fear of Burning Alive. This is a new one that just came out in the last set, the um, the Manners, uh, yeah, Duskmorn, yeah. Um, and Fear of Burning Alive is kind of like a mono red version of Legate that has a little bit better closing power to it um, at the cost of not getting good card advantage. So, so six you have to mana, play like, four, four, yep. nightmare. Hits uh, three things for four damage. Deals four damage to each opponent. And, and then, then that deals if four you have damage delirium, each, yeah. a source you control deals lava coming into opponent there are four. And then more. it hits their creatures for four as well. Right. So you hit four, three creatures from three different players. It has to be one each for four. But it works amazing with pingers. It works amazing with anything like flame rift. Um, you play a lot of direct damage spells so that you can go like lightning bolt your face, kill one of your creatures, that kind of stuff. But it's another one right. of those ones that punishes people for killing it because if you recast the 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 fear of burning alive uh it's going to land and it's going to kill another creature and it's going to do four more damage to your face right. so i really like that one as well yeah, yeah. so that's a it's a short list there's about all six right. or seven without actually revealing it you can take from all of that list and 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 maybe guess what ryan might play next time but <laughs> hey so now we're going to wrap it up ryan one once again if you would like to uh shout out uh, all of your platforms content and etc Go ahead. Check out the YouTube uh, backslash Common Connoisseurs, uh, or you can just search up Common Connoisseurs. If you get close to Connoisseur, you'll find it. It's a hard to spell word. It um, is. You a, can find my every time there. I've ever tried to fucking put your shit into my show notes, and I'm like, oh my god! Every yeah. time I misspell, it's horrible. It's horrible. Yeah, it's horrible. <laughs> I, it, it sounds really. I, I like the sound of it. It's got you know. I've got a great tagline. It's a great. The, it's a great word. 
It just yep. sucks to spell. It's, it's just like French. Elemental Those B, damn you know? French. <laughs> right. Yeah, one more reason the French ruined the world, right? No, just kidding. Uh, but but basically, um, it, that's the way to find me. The other way is just uh, join in the Common Connoisseurs do Discord. You, ha- do you, you have can a help link us get tree? up to. Um, I do, yeah. Um, but it's link tree it's, is the easiest thing. Like everything's yeah, there. What, what is my link tree? Um, I don't know if I. Ha- oh, here it is. Yeah, link tree backslash Papa Popper. Um, you and you can find there. We we do have um, play mats, which I'm going to be doing a revamp of the play mats here pretty soon. There's going to be a, by the end of the year. I'll have, I have uh, play mats store. too. Yeah, there we've got we've got some cool ones coming out. I'm going to be making uh, well. actually. I haven't uh, told anyone other than the uh, patrons yet, but but we're going to have a special Spoilers. play mat. Yep, spoiler. Uh, special play mat for supporters of the channel will have access to a Steel Series version of the play mat that'll have a bunch of premium features on it. Nice. It'll have a, a unique logo on it. Um, it'll all be kind of steel themed. Um, and that's going to be for the sort of uh, competitive arm of the common connoisseurs, which which is currently being developed right now. So, um, yeah, come join the Discord server. We have uh, we're just shy of 800 people in the server right now. It's a great nice. place to learn about different decks, to get feedback on your decks, to meet people and play games. A great place to train. It is the dojo, as they say. So that's kind of where you can find me. I'm not active on Twitter anymore, uh, but you can find me there at Papa underscore Popper. And uh, yeah, that's a great way to follow me. Uh, and feel free to DM me if you have any questions, lists that you want to send, and uh, we'll we'll make sure to to uh, plug you in. So um, content will be returning soon. Um, I've just purchased a new computer. I wonder if I can actually put this on display here. Here we go. We'll do we'll oh. do this right here. There it is. Ooh. Um, but yes, just got a new computer, which is going to allow me to stream the, uh, uh as oh, I said, I, okay. I, I get, oh, I was going to say, I can add it in post, but yeah. Ah, uh, there we go. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. Um, finally got a new computer. My old one, bless its heart was, uh, was, was showing, um, it wasn't just showing its age, but it was like decrepit, you know, it was like starting to show smoke every time I got up to 90 plus percent CPU usage when I was streaming. So um, streaming will be back. I'm going to be getting new camera equipment, new audio equipment. We're going to be putting sound baffling on the walls. Um, so there's a lot of cool stuff coming down the line for the channel. And um, Excellent. and there will be a deck tech here within the week on Hollow Marauder as well, where we uh, lay out all these different things. We're going to have a primer that uh, Dagon Righteous and Erosium and I are going to be building up. Uh, so you can uh, nice. take the deck and play it in a tournament yourself. But anyways, yeah, that's, that's right. where you can find me. Awesome. Once again... Congratulations on your win, your second you. sanctuary takedown, and uh, yeah, I mean, you're you're a, a a brewing force out there. So you know, keep doing what you're doing, keep building that community. Glad to see that you're going to be back to making some content because uh, the void has been there. It has, uh, it has for sure, and I definitely I, I, I hated leaving it, um, but. Uh, I think as I've been communicating with folks, I also got a new job about four months ago and it's got a lot more responsibility and um, and I kind of overcommitted to it in a way um, to really, you know, make a good impression and make sure that I was doing a good work and learning the space. But even if I hadn't overcommitted to it, I decided that my content creation was going to have to take a backseat to my career uh, for a brief moment, but that I'd get back to it once I had a paycheck that could actually pay for yep. new equipment and all that stuff. So um, trust me, so, if, I, yeah. if I if I couldn't afford to live, I would not be doing you wouldn't be things. making content. Right. right. So, so. It, ultimately, it's a good thing. It was a yeah. long break and it meant that I wasn't able to play magic for a bit. And that kind of sucked. But um, we're back. But it's then you yeah, then you just came in and was like, I win. Yeah, it's and you know what? Uh, I, I hate you for it, but I love you for it. So you know, you the go. funny thing is, if I could leave just one little note for folks uh, who are watching this uh, as a gem of unsolicited advice when it comes to, to to magic as a whole, especially the tournament environment, but a magic as a whole. I approach this tournament with zero expectations about how I'd perform, and with no sense that i was like oh i'm bringing a, a, a good deck like i, I felt to that way well too it. like i felt like there was no weight on me this time it yeah, was just no like I, right. I played clean i did yep. everything i was supposed to do and Play i could have i could have won i could have won this game i could have won that game i could have done this i could have done that but like i i played to the best of my ability and that's all Play, you can that, do that's right that's all you can do and and i think the fact that i came in with that attitude where i was just grateful to be there playing magic me the too. fact that i came and in with like that's where i was too 
that that you're going to win more games and you're going to have a better tournament experience and you're going to win more tournaments if to you fair, take that sort of approach. I didn't win any games, but but that, but it, but again, this is this is <laughs> the, the attitude the is, is what you need. Is you just go into it, just, just just play it, just play to the yes. best of your ability, and, and you're going to win the, games. I have won hundreds of games yeah. that weren't on camera, that weren't in a tournament. In, in tournaments, I have lost. Almost every game I played, I've won a couple. So you know, well, but this is how it goes. It is like at the at the Olympic level. If you're competing in the Olympics, the best coaches out there are going to tell you to do a process mentality. Focus not on your results, but on the process to get there, and you're going right. to get more wins, and you're going to bur- and you're not going to be as likely to burn out. And I think that that's a really big important part of of increasing your win rate in magic is by having more fun, taking it less seriously and and just enjoying the fact that you're playing the game right. is ultimately going to lead to better results. Cause look, yep. game one in the tournament, I threw that game so thoroughly. I, I had an excellent hand. I missequenced some stuff and then I compounded my mistakes with five more mistakes that fundamentally lost me the game. And instead of beating myself up savagely over it and being like really upset, I was like, Okay, that sucked. I played really shitty. We'll play better in the next one. And I went into it and I was able to take down the tournament. And I think that a lot of that is because I wasn't like, you know, finger on the button to like harangue myself about my mistakes. So just for folks out there watching, um, you know, consider adopting that in your next tournament experience. And I guarantee you, you're going to have more fun. I mean, you're going to win more games over the long run. So honestly, yeah, adapt that to your every game experience. To, to, well, I mean, life, I mean, we're not life coaches. We're not going to go there. But just in your your next even casual game, if you go into it with the mindset of just like, I don't give a fuck if I win or lose. I'm just going to play yeah. to the best of my ability. I'm here. I'm here you're to gonna, play. You're, you're going to you're going to do the thing, and sometimes you're going to yeah. win. Sometimes you're going to lose. Like I and that light. I have the receipts. Great. I have yeah. hundreds of videos on this channel where I've won. And I've lost, yeah. and I've won, and yeah. I've lost. I've faced adversity and just folded. I've faced adversity and I I triumph. You know that's yep. that's, that's that's the way that the, the competitive landscape works, and that is what it is. Clay played As like seventy say. fucking tournaments before he got his first win. I've I played like ten. Yep. You know, tournaments so are, like ter- it it's is a, what it is. It's a, yeah, and and you know again, uh, you know, tournaments are a large part uh, luck. They are also a volume thing. Um, the more tournaments you play, the more likely you are to win one. Yeah, of course. More, more players um, makes a huge difference because, like, we, I've played in several of the sanctuaries where like drops happened, and I got in three man pods two, three times in a row. And Common Theory even did a whole podcast on how to adapt to the three man pod because we balance yeah. our decks for four players, and when three players are introduced, it it kind of skews things. And it does make some of your cards less valuable and whatever. But yep. I digress. Like Sivers and Holm Rotter drawing less cards. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. So, but anyway, at, yeah. at the end of the day. Note. Mm-hmm. Approach the game lightly. Be light on yourself. Have patience and grace. Come in with low expectations. Focus on having fun. And you're going to win more and do better in tournaments and have a better um, life. Also, there like, tur- <laughs> like with these tournaments, there is an entry fee, right? So, like, we are putting a small... Uh, it's a small entry fee most of the time. It's like it's entertainment. It's, it's, it's fifteen bucks. It's whatever. It's like a movie yeah, you, or, you or this play, or that. Yeah, right. It's it's, it's a like meal. A, it, it is what it is. Uh, I'm not it's saying like it's, a, it's 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 <laughs> that was my point. Is that it's like gambling. And if Except you treat it in the same thing, if you treat it in the same way that like this is disposable income. Yep, that's I'm gonna right. throw this, this out. Money. I'm and, not expecting to get it back. This money right. goes down. Like this, if you go gambling, the best. If you are a person who likes to gamble, the very best way to do it so that you don't end up fucking yourself over is you go in and you say, all this money <laughs> is, is entertainment money. Right. It is going away. I, I'm spending it by doing I'm this. Buying I'm buying a video game. A good time. But instead yep, of buying right. a $60 video game, I'm going to gamble. This $100 with is gone. I work in a casino, back, so <laughs> like I understand this wholly. But the exactly, point yeah. being is that like you are going to pay a little bit to play in this tournament scene, and you're going to lose it. I've already paid for several tournaments. I have not won a single one. I'm I'm still at the point where if I won my next tournament or the tournament after that or like the next five, like if I won one of those, I make my money back. Well, and so, ultimately it's seven, 17 bucks to go have fun with your friends and a bunch of people from across the world right. to play Magic, which is a great and, game. And it, if yeah. you win, you get your money back and then some or whatever. And yep. you get the opportunity to make a really cool token. 
if you're playing in Sanctuary. If you're not playing in Sanctuary, yeah, there's other benefits. Sometimes there have been real world uh, you know prizes like cards and things. But yeah, I the popper scene decided on my token. The popper scene is growing. I I decided on mine. If I was to win, I was going to make a squirrel token, but I did not. Oh, that's a great choice for you. Yeah, right. Um, right. It'll probably be a blood token or a map token. Um, or honestly, even, even if I win on another deck. I probably will still make a squirrel token just because I have Do it. to. It's, yeah, of course you have to. It's the thing. It's it's yeah. like it's my. It was hallmark. like the first token I made was an initiative token because I am right. such an initiative stand. It makes right. sense. So yeah. Anywho, but yeah, we all have our things. Me here. Yeah. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Thank you for talking with us. Uh, congratulations again on your win. The deck is spicy. Uh, I'm I'm happy to see you win with something that wasn't like. Gretchen, because I'm sick of seeing the Gretchens and the Lore Weavers and the other things when Malcolm Kettis, etc. I have been actively trying to build decks that combat this meta. Sivris Cloakwood was one of them. Uh, my next tournament list is Arabella, but I'm also working with Heartless on Zoyoa as another discard outlet kind of attrition commander. We're we're trying to fucking push the meta, man. Like that's that's it. Like I want people in my circle that are trying to fucking push the meta because we don't want the same ten or less decks at the top of the the format. That's the only that's way awful. to do it is to and play something. It isn't those top we have ten to, decks. We have to do it. We have to play it. Yeah, we have to it, test play it. something we have other to than Gretchen. It. Play something other than Malcolm. Play something other than Apple. I, I understand and, if you're that guy yeah. that's like, I want to win the tournament, and I'm just going to play the known quantity and get your win. That's cool. I didn't want that. I didn't want. I. I. I okay. I'll roll that back. I did want that. I played Malcolm Kettis at two sanctuaries. I lost both times. I got a win in one of them. The other one I scrubbed out. In the one that I won, I came in fifth place. That was actually sanctuary one. I came in fifth place, which you actually were, the, I think, the person who got ahead of me because of tiebreakers because we had ties. I had mm -hmm. a win and a tie and a loss. And I think it was you had the same thing and you got in on strength of whatever and uh, beat me out for it but which would have been a really cool story like oh cdh player turns into cpdh player and gets into the top four on his first fucking tournament crazy but ryan was like no i'm, I'm the, the, the shark lurking <laughs> you're the in the deeps. You're, you're the villain the villain, you're of the this villain in this story yeah. uh-huh any anyhow thank you very much for joining me Thanks for discussing your deck. It's been yeah. a great conversation. The, the deck seems to have legs. Like when I honestly didn't even know what you were playing. I didn't play you in the tournament. So like I lost whatever I lost and did whatever I did. And then I was like, okay, well, I didn't get there. And then Gator got in and we kind of did this little like team thing. They, they did it in the, the tournament prior. I think it was Common Cause where they uh, played Malcolm Breaches. There was three of them. Uh, from the podcast that, that did the thing. Uh, but Rowan couldn't make it this time, so they asked me, and then they, we, we discussed what did we play, and they were like, well, we'll just we'll, we'll, we'll play your baby. And I was like, hell yeah, let's play it. And he took it. I could have gotten the first win, and me versus him in game three, I was very close. If I would have gotten both those wins instead of him in the two wins... I could have been in the final, and maybe, maybe you didn't win. Maybe I took it out. You know, who knows? Anything can happen. Shit's wild. That's right. You should play it, CPDH it, it, because this is a it, wide open this format. This format's amazing. And like, let's just let's just do the thing. But yeah, this this uh, format is uh, is I think the 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 finest format that is currently available in in magic it is incredibly self-regulating very very small ban list um, it really gets back to magic the way garfield intended it as sort of the meme goes but in a very strong way because it feels like a combination I mean, of combat is actually like relevant matters, right <laughs> combat ratters like that was a big part of magic yeah it, it's a fabulous format very inexpensive i have like 28 decks and it costs me like very little to play they very rarely rotate you almost I never get over an exclusively 30 better cdh decks so imagine that cost. Ugh. I, I, this I is why I've been. I this, is why I, this is why I've been like, yeah, proxies and CPDH. Let's go. All yeah, right. Man, well, I'm way. looking very much forward to meeting you in Vegas, uh, along yeah, with stoked. a huge amount of Popper Commander players and RC yeah. members. Derek's going to be there. Clay's going to be there. Ryan's going to be there. I'm going to be there. Robert's going to be there. Like, like every 
almost every popper like channel that's out there or is doing things big old gathering community. there's gonna be a lot of us there i got shipped the banner it's actually you can see it right there that box that's the banner paul shipped it to me so i could drive it up to vegas yeah we're gonna be out there there's gonna be a big ass banner if you want to come play CPDH, we're all going to be there. I'm also open to playing CEDH. I'm planning on bringing about three, four decks uh, in paper that are popper. And then about the equivalent in, in CEDH. I have to make some updates and, you know, proxies. Uh, of course. <laughs> to... Uh, Get Nothing everything updated. That. I was I was trying to get Arabella in paper. I was gonna make an uh, uh, an order, but it's too close now. I can't. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have to to proxy most of that. But I, I don't feel bad. Anyhow, no. Uh, there's gonna be a huge uh, CPDH thing. So yeah, come check us out. Um, we're, we'll probably have some swag to give away. I know I have stickers. Um, some of the other guys may have other stuff. We're available to sign things if you actually care. Uh, and, uh, yep. you know, all that good stuff. But once again, Ryan, congratulations. Thank you so much for joining me. And, uh, we're going to call it here. We, we tried you. to shoot for Appreciate like an hour, me. but like, hey, here we are. Ah, hour and a half. Here we are. It's all here good. We we're all Gucci. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. And, right. uh, yeah, look forward to playing more games with you soon. All right. Also, I'm probably going to debut some shorts because I haven't done shorts yet, but I'm probably going to do that vlog style prepping, Fine. road tripping, and being in Vegas. I think that's going to be the shorts debut. So Sick. more to come, more to come. See y'all Hell later. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of your evening. We'll catch you later. Have a good one. Catch you on the flip.